Hey there everyone, your programming friend from YouTube and Learn Code Online Hidesh back with another video. And today we're going to be talking about this add item button. So if we go back in here, uh, we can see that our application, hit a quick reload there, has all these add up items and all of these things. Now what is the plan? The plan of action is really simple. We want to first of all grab the input from this input field and then as soon as I click on add button, we want to grab it add it onto this particular list. So there will be add, it will be added up at the top. And of course, if you remember, it will be added with the opacity zero. Then we'll be learning about a simple set timeout function in JavaScript, which can be called after given amount of time, probably one second, uh, two second, one millisecond, and however you really want to go ahead with that. So if I just onto Google and look for the function, which is set timeout and JS, of course, MDN, and we can look for this resource set timeout and this is a pretty good function and notice uh, it just if I can have a simple example of it that would be better and uh, yeah there we go so we can just pass on any time in here uh, simply based on that you can read more about it you can uh, just mention a piece of time and I guess it is on milliseconds I believe so uh, if I'm wrong please correct me there uh, it's being long that I've read this documentation. I'm pretty sure it's in the millisecond. So we can just assign some of the time there. And if I can find it out a little bit. And let me just search that. Uh, yes, it is in the milliseconds. Okay, so there we go. So pretty good. So we're going to be using this set timeout function uh, to just uh, simply assign a new property, which is going to be uh, our this property. Let me show you that. So in the CSS, we do have this bottom property which says visual. So we'll be assigning that so that opacity becomes one. Make sure you have used this important, otherwise it may work, may not work. Okay, in order to avoid further confusion, let me also walk you through that how our list item is being designed. So if I click onto this, uh, notice first and foremost, we do have a UL. Inside this UL, we have to create a list item. Okay, that's the first tab. Inside the list item, I do have a couple of things. First of all, we have an input tag. Uh, which has a type of checkbox and id as check and then we have a label which is go to gym yes i know some people like to put label around this input so that when user click even on the go to gym it just get check mark but that's not how we have designed it we could have done that we could have done that no big deal notice again as i mentioned first of all we have to create this list item then two item inside it which is input and label and then put it uh, just in the ul okay and what we can do is uh, we can just use a method which is uh, inside this ul we can use insert before yes we, there is a method called insert before and we can command it to insert before li and specially we can mention that ul and we can mention that your child node which is number zero always array starts from zero so before this child not zero you can add it there if you want to use append, that's fine too, but it's going to add it at the bottom. So no big deal there as well. Uh, use it however you like. No big deal. Okay. We can remove this console log. We don't need it at all. First and foremost, how we're going to take it down. First of all, I need input. So I'll be grabbing the input. I wrote it correct. Yes. Input from document dot get element by ID and I will be using input. Now, I highly recommend you to use uh, the query selector if you want to uh, just do it here. It's not going to make much difference in here. Okay, so there we go. Uh, and the second thing that we need is we need to grab this value from it. So we're going to say uh, var, we can call it as item or maybe my value or whatever you like. This is going to come up from input dot value. So there we go value there we go that's it that's all what we need so now we do have value of it we will also need to get the list as well so we're going to call this as unordered list uh it would be great if we would have grabbed this uh at the top uh we have actually grabbed it all the all the way at the top uh but actually we can grab it again or probably can use the upper one. I'm really confused here. So let's just grab it again. We will figure it out later on on the go. So get element by ID and we are going to grab the list. I'm pretty sure we are doing it unnecessarily. We have used it above. We could have just called it. And also what we want to do is we want to create a, a simply text 
text node there. And this text node is going to be created by document dot create text node. And this text node will have a simple uh, variable, which is going to be item, whatever you have called this value in here. Okay. So what we have done is we have created a text node, which is having the item. So whatever the user has input, we have actually grabbed that into this text node. So whenever we'll be creating a new uh, input box in here, just like this one, uh, li and inside the label, we are going to just put it there. Okay, so pretty easy stuff. This is the exact plan we are going through. Okay, enough of this, we have grabbed almost everything what we need. Now, first and foremost, let's just make a check and an assignment for you, we're going to use if statement here. So we're going to say if the item, which is the value I've grabbed from the input text is actually equals to empty string, then we simply want to return we simply want to return, come on, I can write return, return false. So when we return false, it actually doesn't really work anything. So here's a quick assignment, add a p tag and assign a value of enter your to do. So what you have to do, you have to create to do. You have to create a p element uh, on the go. And just below this input tag, you have to insert that p tag and should have a value of this enter to do. Okay, so really no big deal. And once we learn how after some time, we can just set an opacity to uh, zero or one, we are going to add that property or you can write a new CSS to just remove that. Okay, so this is the plan. And this is a so small assignment for you. And we'll be working on the else case. Okay. So if it is not empty, what I really want to do is I want to create an ally. So I'll be holding that in a variable, I will be calling this as document, document dot create element. There we go. And I want to create an element which is of type input. In case you're wondering why we are creating an input type, notice we do have input. So we are creating this input, which is but I haven't mentioned that what type of it should be. So what I can do is uh, you can mention onto this uh, that what kind of checkbox and everything you want. I just did the mistake. Yes, I want to create an ally. Come on, how can I do that? So we have created an ally. Uh, in case you got confused just a bit there, first and foremost, we need to create this ally, then we'll be creating an input and then label. Okay, I hope I didn't ma made a mess much there. So this is being created, ally is being created. Now we want to create a checkbox. So we're going to be creating a check uh, box. And notice I have actually used an ally directly here because I have already declared my ally above. Since I forgot to declare the checkbox, that's why I declared it on the go. You can declare it at the top as well in case you are planning to use it much like that. Okay. Now we want to create an input of type checkbox. So really simple. We're going to use document dot create element and this time I want to create an input. There we go. Now this input should have some properties, it should have a type of checkbox and should have a name of item. Okay, just like what we are having in here. Uh, we don't have a name actually. So we can just ignore that. But surely we need to assign a type in here. And also we need to assign an ID of check this is going to be a new stuff that you will be learning here. Okay, first of all, this checkbox can be assigned this type directly by calling the property type. Okay. And you can simply say that you should be a check box. There we go. So no big deal. This is all being done. Now the thing is the interesting one is how we can assign ID or a class to any kind of this checkbox or maybe a paragraph tag or maybe an H1 tag. It is really simple, just name your element in this case, uh, your check box. And then you can use a property known as uh, not a property a method which says set attribute. Now this set attribute takes two parameter, a string, uh, kind of a key value pair. So my key is ID. And the value that I want to assign to it is check. And I believe I called it as checked. Uh, let me just show you that. Yes, ID equals check. So I'm just having it. So as many as you wish you want to have it, you can have it. Sadly, it cannot take more than uh, these two parameters. 
There are some great solutions on the Stack Overflow like creating a helper function in which you can pass on an object and it will assign that. But these are like uh, going around with them. Ultimately, we have to run this function again and again. Okay. So now this attribute is being created. Uh, this is all first type. We have created a checkbox. That's done. And uh, let me just write some comments for you. That would be helpful. Create li. So we have created that. And now in here we have done is create a check box. That's the second thing we have done. And the third thing that we are going to be doing is create label. Okay, so now it's time to create a label. Shouldn't be a big deal. We are going to call var label. And this label is going to be created by document dot create element. And we want simply a label, no big deal. Okay, so label is being created. And this label, does it have any properties? Uh, we don't have any properties for it. Uh, uh, although we can add some of these properties, uh, we don't need it. Okay, we just need a property for this uh, ally check, which is uh, my check. Uh, but we can add that a little bit later probably and uh, we can I'm just looking forward if I can check all of that we can add property to this li no big deal okay now in this uh, label I want to add a couple of properties uh, so that you can just get to know about them later on we can surely delete that this is just a repetitive purpose so label, if I want to add any, just use that set attribute and you can assign any property. Now you might want to use a for here and check, uh, not the check, for and item. Okay, now this is totally dependent on you. It has nothing to do and I can just write a line. This is optional. I just wanted to repeat this kind of stuff to show you the stuff. If you want to leave this line, that's totally okay. So we have created our label. Now it's the fun time is add these elements on web page. Okay, so how we can do that? That should be absolutely simple. First and foremost, uh, we need to use uh, our unordered list. And in this unordered list, we need to append a child, which is known as uh, simply a label. And uh, then we will also append in the li. Let me just show you first and foremost these things. So first and foremost, in this unordered list, we are going to append a child, uh, which is going to be label. Okay, that's one job done. And in this li, what we have created, we are going to append child in this list element, which is going to be checkbox. Okay. And in this label, we want to insert some things. So label dot append child inside this label, I want to insert a child which is text node. So that is also done and sorted. Now comes up the interesting part, which is li dot append child. And inside that I want to put this label. Okay, there we go. That is all sorted out. Now everything is being sorted, we haven't placed anywhere it. So what I want to do is I want to say unordered list insert uh, before and insert before actually takes two parameters which is uh, what is the child that you want to add I want to add a list item which is li where you want to insert it I want to insert is it into ul dot child or ul dot child nodes and at the very first so it will add it before that okay there we go Okay, so quite a lot of stuff that we have done, uh, but we haven't done one good thing. Uh, although I can show you that right now, uh, doing by something like this, li.class name, and I can just assign a class name of visual. Okay, uh, let's just save that and see if we are able to make some progress or we need to do some kind of uh, maybe uh, stuff like that. So let's just add an element. Uh, we're going to call this as test, add to do. And there we go. Our test is being added. Okay. And I know a lot of people get confused in these lines. So don't get confused. I cleared an example in the previous video just for this part. So make sure you go through with them. Till the line this here, we are not doing anything. We are just generating the elements. Then we are putting some text node inside the label. And uh, 
so notice here what we are doing inside the ul we are creating a label and this label we are holding as an li so li dot append child is checkbox inside the label uh, we are getting a checkbox uh, we are just append child actually doesn't really get li into inside that it just appends to it so it just will add a later on what i mean by that is uh, when i select this guy this test actually notice inside the li there is an input and then we have labels so append child doesn't insert inside the input element it just ins insert after that element okay so i might have mischosen some of the words uh, so that's what we are doing okay now so far what is doing is we are not actually clearing the input that's the one thing we should be doing so let's just do that here uh, how we can do that we can simply say input dot value is going to be equal to empty string that's it now save that and let's just see if we have a test add to do it cleans it up gets here it just gets added just right here i want to give some of the visual effects in here as well i know video is long but let me get that so we're gonna cut that out and we will be doing something with set timeout now this set timeout can be a little bit tricky because it uses a couple of things first thing that uses is the timeout so how many time you want to spend uh based like it's usually in the millisecond so i want to just get like one millisecond or two millisecond i'm gonna go for one and i can paste my code in here so it will execute after one millisecond this guy in here is it really second I'm, I'm pretty confused in here i have to look into documentation so when i say test add that notice it gives you a nice feeling probably one is like too much early i want to go for two at least so get him back here test and add to do and notice it gets it smoothly not much smoothly i want it to be like more faded out okay so there we go uh we have done this my awesome to do and we have added some visual effects onto it with just set timer now here's a quick assignment for you uh, now you have learned that how you can set the timer assignment i hope you have done with this assignment as well so now add this effect on your p tag as well and after some time what you have to do initially it should have opacity of one and after like two or three seconds the opacity should become zero so that's your simple assignment i know this video is too long but sometimes you know stuff need to be done in the same video otherwise it can become much more confusing there we go let's clean up the code i know i have redeclared some of the variables many time uh that's not a good thing i should not be doing that but anyways uh, we can now do some kind of refactoring or i can add a video for refactoring of the code where we can make much more sense onto this probably this li i can move it inside some part in here uh, I would like to always keep my global variables as less as possible, but in this case, I haven't followed any of the best practice in here. Probably in the upcoming videos, I'll try to use that. So that's it for this video, and let's catch up in the next one.